we'll be talking to Zohra Padamsi. Zohra is a parent of a 20-year-old adult, Nafi, who was diagnosed with autism at the age of one year, five months. Let's talk to her and let's learn from her. Thank you. Zohra, I wanted to ask you, what is the difference between ABA program and a Sunrise program? ABA is, of course, it's tabletop and a lot of instruction and all. And Sunrise is like, it's more of willingness and all. You join in your child's world and the child is automatically pulled out from whatever he's doing and he is he's interacting with us. Sunrise goes along with the child you know the the sunrise doesn't disturb the child like you know he's uh, he's he's assuming and all you join them and then eventually like once if you feel like okay you're joining with him with his ism like whatever he's doing and you are also joining the child like you know automatically he looks at us and then uh, then once he looks at us then slowly and gradually we take them out from whatever they are doing and we would, you know, we would encourage them to interact with us and, and you know, we, we encourage them to be with us, basically. So, if a parent wants to do ABA and Sunrise and RDI together, what, is it possible, not possible? Mm, no, no. The ABA and Sunrise is way different. Like, you know, they are two opposite programs. Like, you know, sometimes you invite a uh, child into uh, your world while they are in their world. We slowly, gradually pull them out from their world and put, and we we try to make them interact with us. While ABA is like, okay, you need to sit here and we need to work together and you, you instruct them and you ask them to do few things and you expect them to do. And there is... There's not much willingness coming from the child. ABA is like, okay, the person has told you to do, that's why they are doing. It's not like willingness. While uh, sometimes... But, but, yeah. but you mentioned yeah. that the child gets reinforced also. He gets his reinforced. Also. So the child is willing or not really willing? Basically, you know, their whole attention is on the reinforced. They are like, okay, we don't know whether they exactly want to do or they are just waiting for the reinforce. I mean, maybe they are just want to, for the sake of completing tasks, they are doing it. They are not with you. They are not with you completely, like emotionally and with, uh, with like, you know, it's like, okay, this person has told me to do a few things and I'm doing and I'm going to get whatever I want. So there is no willingness. Basically, like, okay, you're doing for the sake of doing because that person has asked you to do. While sunrise, we have to join them and eventually they see us like we are joining them in their world. Then they look at us and then they automatically look at us and they see, okay, what that person is doing next to me. And, you know, we have those mirrors put up in our, our room. So where the child doesn't have to look directly at you, like if suppose he's examining, I sit next to him and the mirror is right in the front and the mirror covers both of us. So it's, initially, it's not like directly looking at us. It's like they look at us through mirror. Like, okay, I'm doing something. Even he's doing something. And, and you know, they're forced to look. Okay, what's happening? Like, why is she in the mirror? What she's doing? And then they look at us. And then slowly and steadily, then they look in the side. Okay, the same person who is in the mirror is next to me. Let me see what she's doing. And that way, like then, we build up our uh, communication and we build up our interaction. And that way, like, you know, if suppose uh, the child is uh, doing, I mean, he's playing with a ball, even you have a ball. Like, you try to take the same stuff which the child has. So then you can build up the interaction in a same manner. Then you can play a ball game. Or then uh, if, you, if you have a car and even he's got a car and he's examining with a car and if he looks at you, so, okay, oh, wow, Nafi, you're looking at me. Wow, we celebrate and we, we get happy. I mean, we feel very happy. We, we make them feel, okay, we are very happy that you've seen us. And then we start our interaction with whatever we have. It doesn't have to be like, okay, let me get this, let me get that. With whatever child has, 
and the same what child has you have so in that way the child feels more connected okay even i have a car let me do something like what my mom is doing you know it's like that so basically the sunrise has same stuff one thing like same looking like you know if you have a car then we keep two cars if you have a stuffed toy we keep the same stuffed toy too so in that way suppose the child comes to us and he nurtures okay i want that you give him that first you are uh, like you wait for a while till he gives you a look and 110% the child is going to give you a look because he wants that particular stuff from you so he looks at you okay wow you looked at me your this is your uh, stuff and then i would pick up the same thing from the shelf and then we and we join them and in that way the interaction uh, happens how is nafi now how old is nafi now what are the ways that he keeps himself busy now what are your goals for nafi at the moment and uh, anything that you would like to talk about your parenting with him mm-hmm. and your expectations from him whatever yeah. that is the present okay. level so now nafi is 20 year old so like for me to put him in the room and do something it's not possible because he's young adult and he doesn't deserve uh like to put, keep him in the room and do something which is he's not a want to do i mean it's against his uh, willing ness and all so basically you know i do a lot of like i integrate in my whatever i'm doing with him a lot of rdi and somehow i feel rdi and sunrise is a little close to each other because even rdi uh, invites the child it's not like a table top and lot of instruction it's not like it's rdi is basically emotional uh, sharing and all where sunrise also does that they wait for the child to come in your world and then they interact with the child so the same rdi you do the co regulation initially if the child is not with you you walk back and forth and you wait for the child to uh, to look at you and then you begin your uh, activities and all so the same thing i'm using with nafi like you know like if suppose we are in the room i don't want him to be like doing certain things certain tasks and all we do a lot of uh, generalized uh, things like you know we have the clothes to fold and put them in the cupboard so we we take nafi nafi his clothes only we fold them and then i ask him okay let's put your clothes in your cupboard so in that way we end the room but though he doesn't feel constricted he knows that this is his daily living stuff so like it's not like we are doing some uh, task related stuff so that's the thing and then of course and we are we go down for a walk and all there also like you know we have lot of interaction going on and we we see different things we talk about those things and all so it's basically less talk and more of connectivity with rdi so that's what i'm following and uh, of course then if suppose he's hungry we go to the kitchen we make a popcorn or something and it's basically i try to give uh, more responsibility to uh, nafi for doing the stuff but like you know i don't make it like a task thing like you know it has to be like a willingness so i say oh nafi you're hungry let's make a popcorn I think where we keep the popcorn. We want to look for them, so we take out the those actual popcorn and then uh, we microwave it or we put it in the pressure cooker and all. And he uh, this uh, the home environment is very. He's known to all the things where we keep what. So you know, I ask him, okay, now we need something like you know so that we can pick up the popcorn and all. so he gets the thing and if not then i help him out little bit and then we do that back and forth interaction you know so that's why uh and uh, that's it like we go out we do the stuff we are in the kitchen we are in the room we are walking around the, like okay i have few clothes to put in my room and they are lying in the living area i mean living uh, hall or something so i said okay now let's uh, keep these clothes in my room So I ask him to take the clothes, and then he walks towards my room, and he helps me to put it on the bed, on the table, or in the cupboard. That's it. 
how how is his communication level like now how does he communicate when he wants something and how are his self help skills is he completely independent how is it at the moment uh, independent in the thing uh, like for lunch and all i have to be with him because otherwise like you know he is not going to eat and then uh, it will be difficult for him to like you know then he won't know like if he's hungry or anything like you know so i have to be with him uh, when he's having his uh, meals and all and of course he eats his roti and all right i have to mix and just put it in front of him he does he eats he's very good with the uh, finger food so he's dependent with that he he takes roti and he eats well but i have to be next to him because otherwise then you know he's not complete, he's not going to complete the food and like you know that is uh, not a good thing like he needs to have his proper meal so i need to be around and with the bathing thing i need to help him a little bit uh with drying and all like you know i have to tell him up yeah i need to dry your back and all so that you know it's more of a hygiene and brushing also i need to help him a little bit because these are all personal hygiene where we can't just leave the child because you know it's not good for in a long run you have to help them to get them right in all these uh, areas and uh, otherwise uh, uh, wearing clothes and all he's independent like you know i just give him this t-shirt and i say okay now please you can put on your t-shirt and he does very well like that uh, physically all uh, his work is proper you know, with little supervision and all and then he does mm. and if he yeah. wants something how does he communicate with you does he look into your eyes and like how does he communicate yeah, he, does. he does he does a lot of uh, look uh, are there in him like if suppose he wants something he goes to the kitchen and if it's like on his eye level and where he can get it he's he's okay with it but if suppose he needs something which is higher to him so of course he nudges because he doesn't have a speech at all like you know he just babbles and all but he doesn't have a proper meaningful speech so then he he uh, does with a lot of gestures and all he takes us around and then of course then if suppose it's not where he can't reach out he gives him and of course that time he looks at us because he knows okay i need to look at uh, the person if i need some what are his favorite things i remember he makes a lot of paintings and all is he still interested in paintings or what does he do yeah. with his yeah yeah painting he likes like normally like uh, of course uh, we need to be around when he's painting because otherwise it's messy of course so you know i put the easel and all and then i put up the mount board or then i put up the canvas and all and uh, and i i give this uh, i show him the collection of colors and all and he picks up his favorite bright colors like you know and then i don't stop him there like if suppose he's picked up a light yellow and then again he's picked up dark yellow i won't say okay it's from the same category or same family it's his wish he can do whatever because he's in charge of whatever he's doing so i don't uh, disturb him at all and uh, of course then he is uh, he does skating and all that but so coming in for so so he does skating and then other physical activity we have a gym in in our uh, society where he goes and does cycling and all that so basically he is doing a lot more things which the uh, young adults should be doing like it's not like uh, doing in one place and like he's he's all over the place like it's not he's not been restricted like okay you do this you can't do that he's been all over the place so he is basically painting and doing all kinds of physical activities yeah, and yeah, keeping yeah. himself busy through the day yeah <laughs> yeah yeah and he's very good at skating and balancing himself and all and he's very good at uh, taking the stuff and putting uh, from one place to other place like you know we give him uh or whatever like a bag or something like which is a bit heavy we tell him okay okay i want to put this in the kitchen so he's okay with that all those physical stuff because i see he's fit to do all that so why not uh, make him do it and he feel competent also doing that because he he, he can manage it so automatically that that competence come say okay i can do it so i'm doing it it's that 
he he is always very compliant or sometimes not compliant also ah there are good days and bad days veena <laughs> there are days like you know okay i don't want to just give live uh, just just go away like i want to be myself and all and of like, course then I like like all of us are like all of us are yeah. we also oh. have our yeah even we have our own like me time where we don't want to be disturbed and we want to do our things where we want to watch tv or then do our thing or then he's very fond of looking into the magazines and very fond of looking at the pictures in the magazine and especially all those beautiful uh, those girls like you know all those so that's the thing like models and all he's he's, he's very fond of looking at that थैंक यू सो मच जोरा फॉर डूइंग दिस अगेन आई रियली अप्रिशिएट नॉट अ प्रॉब्लम नॉट